Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are going to be talking about RuPaul's Drag Race UK versus the world. The very first episode premiered last night and of course I was watching and I was obsessed and so I thought I'd do a little video and share my thoughts. I was keeping notes while I was watching it because I'm very professional that way and so yeah we're just gonna go through you. We're gonna talk about each of the queens and I'm gonna share my thoughts. So before we dive into this, I just want to say that I am a terrible Drag Race fan in that I've only ever really watched Drag Race US and Drag Race UK. I have not watched any of the spin-offs of RuPaul's Drag Race apart from those. I watched like one episode of Drag Race Canada, wasn't really feeling it, wasn't the vibe, so I haven't really seen what Jimbo and Lemon can do outside of this first episode have not watched Drag Race Thailand even though after seeing the preview where that girl sets herself on fire to do the outfit reveal that got me a little bit interested so I might watch that in the future. Uh, I have not seen Drag Race Holland either so yeah um haven't really watched any of the spin-offs don't know half of the girls in the competition so these will be my very first impressions of them and yeah so let's get into it. So the order of my notes is the order that they performed in the variety show. So we're just gonna go off of that. And first off is Lemon. So Lemon is from Canada's Drag Race. Don't remember her. Literally, like I said, watched the first episode of Canada's Drag Race and don't remember anything from it. So yeah, Lemon, new to me. She looks stunning in her entrance look from what I remember. Her variety performance was kind of dull. Um. Honestly, most of the variety performances to me were like kind of dull. It wasn't like the most exciting and I think that it's kind of sad that it was a little bit lackluster because this is Drag Race UK versus the world. This is a huge international competition so I was expecting all the girls to pull out all of the stops and some of them were flops and one of them just happened to be Lemon. Um, I think that one of the queens says she wasn't really serving face in the performance and I absolutely agree her face was kind of deadpan the whole time and yes okay she did that giant drop split which was like always amazing when I see someone do that because I'm like how do you do that how do you do that without breaking something honestly because it's terrifying but like other than that there was nothing really to it and so yeah I was kind of disappointed and then in terms of Lemon's runway look it was just okay like it was pretty and it was like a long dress and everything but it was just okay so yeah that's what I thought of Lemon and then obviously I guess I'll just talk about it right now because you know we're talking about Lemon so Lemon was the first to perform first on the runway and then she got eliminated and Personally for me, I think that was a good choice because when you look at the two bottom queens, like I really wanted to see more from Janae, so yeah. I'm not really going to be sad about Lemon. I do want to watch Drag Race Canada to like find out more about her as a performer and as a queen. Obviously she did really well in that competition because she got like in the final five or something like that, so yeah. Um, sad that Lemon is gone, but I'm ready to see all the other queens shine, so yeah. Um, Moving on, we're going to talk about Monique Hart. Okay, so my main thing about Monique was literally when Blue Hydrangea comes up to Monique in the workroom and Blue's like, so one time I opened for you in Belfast and you were kind of mean to me. And I was like, what? First of all, I was at that show <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I was there. Um, I didn't actually see anything go on between Monique and Blue because that that was all like behind the scenes stuff and they didn't like do any performances together on stage so I didn't really know that there was drama but that's interesting. Uh, I feel like they're going to give Monique a little bit of a villain edit this season. I mean she came in right away and she was judging everyone in the corner with Jujube so I think she's going to be the bitchy queen this season, which is fine. I mean, she's competitive. She wants this. I see it for her. Amazing. But yeah, I'm surprised because I feel like she's very focused this season compared to like last All Stars where she was all very brown cow stunning, living her fantasy. She's in it now. She's in it to win it. And so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where we go from here with Monique. Her variety performance was okay for me. It wasn't my favorite. I mean, I give props to her for singing live because I know that that's a difficult thing to do, 
but yeah, I just, I don't know. I just wasn't feeling it. I definitely preferred the Bronco's stunning performance from All Stars. Um, so yeah, that's what I have to say about that. Uh, Monique's runway was stunning. I loved it. The green was amazing. It's a beautiful color. It was actually giving me like Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo book cover vibes. That's like the color of green. I imagine that would be like an Evelyn Hugo look, but it was stunning and she looked amazing. So props to Monique for slaying the runway. Then we have Janae. So Janae is from Holland Drag Race and like I said, I've never seen that either, but she's beautiful. Her variety performance was a letdown and I'm really sad about that because I was really excited about her because I'm really excited about all the international queens that I don't know. So I was excited. I was like, oh yeah, Janae, what's her talent going to be? And then it was like a bunch of outfit reveals, but the outfits weren't good. Um... So yeah, that was very sad, but she's definitely in it. She has a fight for her. I know when she was deliberating with the queens, she was very like, I think that I can do better than I did. I will not let you down. I am representing Holland. I'm going to be fierce. And I love that about her. And her runway was beautiful. I can't say that it's original. I feel like we've seen it similarly before, but it was beautiful. She really pulled it out and I feel like if her runway wasn't good, she probably would have went home. Like if you were to compare Lemon's runway look to Janae's, I definitely prefer Janae's. And so I'm really glad she stayed. I'm really excited to see what she brings to the competition. And yeah, it really would have been sad if she was eliminated because she's the only queen representing Drag Race Holland. So it would have been sad to see her go home first. So yeah, we'll see where it goes from here. Hopefully she can pull it out in the next challenge, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. So that was Janae. Then we are moving on to who we got. Uh, Baga! Oh my goodness. Okay, so I might be a little bit biased, but I love all of the Drag Race UK queens that they chose for this season. Like, I was so excited. I was like, yes, Baga, yes, Blue, yes, Cheryl, honestly, like the faves. So Baga was fun. She was the first one onto the main stage, dressed as the people's princess, Diana. She's so fun. Her variety performance was very baga. Like, it was a live performance. She's a singer. She's, like, very camp, very, like, pantomime-esque. Like, she really pulled it out. Um, yeah, okay, she was just singing, but, like, she really put her own spin on it. She really capitalized on the much better. No, I'm not going to try to say it like she does, because I'll embarrass myself. But, yeah, like, Baga really pulled it out. I was really a fan of her performance. Her runway look, uh, I get that she was trying to be different, but it was not the best for me. I knew she was trying to be an Oscar, but I feel like it didn't really come across. I feel like maybe if she was holding like a miniature Oscar as well, maybe that would have come across a little bit better. I don't know. Um, wasn't my favorite. She was doing the River Medway statue walk across the stage, which I appreciated. Uh, if she appointed, if she appointed, then she really would have pulled it out for me. But yeah, um, Baga, her performance was great. Her runway was not. And so, yeah, I guess it makes sense that she was safe. Then we go on to Jimbo. Jimbo is a queen from Drag Race Canada. And honestly, she's a bit weird. Um, and her variety performance will definitely give me nightmares. Honestly, like when the other queens were performing and then it panned to like the other queens just like sitting waiting their turn, all you can see was Jimbo in the black and white and it looks so creepy and I was like, what is going on? And yeah, the variety performance is n like nothing I've ever seen before. I'll admit that I'm very much in the space of like pageantry drag where everyone's always pretty and everyone's always like performing the house down with like singing and dancing and whatever. So Jimbo is very different for me and I think I need to keep like an open mind about her. Kind of like the other like alternative queens we've seen like charity kids and stuff. They're not necessarily my favorite but I think it's just because I'm not used to that side of drag. So yeah, Jimbo is definitely one to watch. I mean, hello, she was like the winner of the challenge. She was in the top two. She was really good. So yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see how she does in the rest of the competition. I'm definitely looking forward to knowing more about her. That being said, 
even though her performance was like creeping me out and giving me nightmares her runway look was stunning the black and white dress was gorgeous everything about it was amazing i loved it and so yes praise for jimbo she was really good and i was glad that she was one of the top two uh then we have i'll talk about the lip sync when I get to the end because I feel like that's the thing I gotta talk about separately so yeah then we move on to Cheryl I love Cheryl Hall literally when I was watching her perform and also Blue Hydrangea Jet I was like in awe because I actually saw Blue and Cheryl perform last year just before Christmas in person so it was like so cool to see them on TV because I was like oh my god I met them that was so fun um but yeah so for me, Cheryl's performance was just okay. Like, I've seen her dance and perform in person, so I know she's an amazing dancer, and she really pulls it out for me. But on TV, it just looked okay. It wasn't anything special. I do really like that she's also capitalizing on her season one catchphrases, because Cheryl Hall has many. But I really like her, and I'm excited to see where she goes in the competition. In terms of Cheryl's runway look, I thought that it was pretty, but it was kind of basic. Um, it was just like, you know, a white dress. It had those gold star details, which were gorgeous, but like, yeah, it was just kind of basic. So Cheryl fell kind of somewhere in the middle for me, but that's okay, because I really like her, so I hope she stays, and I hope that she brings us a lot more catchphrases in season two. And so, yeah. That is Cheryl. Then we move on to Jujubee. So I love Jujubee. I think she's amazing. She's so fun. Her variety performance was fun. I really enjoyed her song. I don't remember what she did in the last All Stars. I kind of had to look it up. Apparently she did sing then too. Um, I don't remember this, but I think I prefer her song this time, considering I really don't remember the last one. So yeah, she's fun. She sadly did not shine as much as I thought she was going to in the beginning, but yeah, she's been in the finale every other time she's been on Drag Race, so I'm looking forward to seeing her kind of excel and get better within the challenges. That being said, I hope it's not like she gets overwhelmed by all of the new queens that she's around. I want her to like turn it out no matter what. She's a star. But we'll see what happens. I know that she has an inner to shine, so I think she will. Then in terms of her runway, oh, her runway was like the glitter moment and it was beautiful. And I just love sparkle. So when she walked in in that all glittery sparkly outfit down the runway, it was amazing. But my main thing is, it's like, I'm not a fan of like a huge like split down the front of your dress, like in the middle. I definitely am a side slit kind of gal. So <laughs> it wasn't my fave that it just like split right down the middle, but it was still stunning. She still pulled it out. I loved it. So yes, that was what I thought of Jujubee. Then we move on to Panjana Heels, Thailand Drag Race Judge. And honestly, that... Her performance was exactly what I expected from this variety show performance. She was giving me everything, honestly. It was amazing. The energy, the vibe, she really pulled it out and I was so excited about it. And I'm really excited to see where she goes in the competition because she's never competed before. So yeah, just to like bring that out as a first impression is amazing and I'm obsessed with it and then Panjana's runway also very stunning it was like simple understated but at the same time it has so much detail in it with like the Thailand lettering on the top of the dress the like headpiece it was actually beautiful and yeah she's just all around stunning and amazing and I think she totally deserved to be in the top two this week because it was just amazing so yes Panjana is definitely a fave then, ooh, last but not least, we have Belfast Belle, Blue Hydrangea, and 100% I'm totally biased because she's representing Belfast, she's representing Northern Ireland, we have to support our hometown girl, but Blue, her variety performance was so adorable and so much fun. I love that she had the props with the two cheerleaders on either side of her. That was so amazing and so fun. And like I said, I really enjoyed it. It was very different from the other performances just because she did have like the props going on. And yeah, she just looks so cute in her cheerleading uniform and everything. I loved it. So yeah, 
blue definitely shined for me. Um, that being said, the runway look, I was very confused because Blue Hydrangea is a look queen. She pulls it out every time. And yet when it came to this runway category, I feel like she got confused. And I wish that I had been down at Boombox at that like watch along where Blue Hydrangea was because I needed to find out more about this outfit choice because I just, I don't know what like was going through her head when she put that on because it's like the category was I'm a winner baby. She should be like, you know, eleganza, extravaganza. But then she came out in this like troll looking outfit, which was pretty and was like nice in its own right but it didn't really fit the category for me and it was such a letdown because it's like girl why, why did you choose that outfit i was so confused um but yeah like obviously she was stunning and polished nonetheless but it wasn't my fave it didn't really fit with the category and so i'm sorry blue but like it, it just didn't do it for me and so that was kind of sad but at least your performance shined and I'm excited to see what you pull out next week because it's going to be a sewing competition so I'm really excited about that and so yeah that was my thoughts on all of the queens I feel like that was kind of a quick run through of all my thoughts on all of them then we will have to move on to the deliberation the lip sync and all of that so in the deliberation all I could really think about was a Jimbo like flip-flopping and bringing up Lemon during Janae's deliberation with her because Janae was over here trying to plead her case like I want to fight I want to win and then Jimbo was here like Mm, but I feel like everything's telling me that I should pick Lemon because Lemon is also representing Canada. Lemon is like my sister. I know her. We have a connection. And it was just kind of like a little bit rude just because like Janae didn't really get a chance to say her piece. I know that it's probably just the way it was edited, but I was over here like, yo, let Janae talk. Like, let's talk about Janae. Let's not bring up Lemon. And then on the other side, you had Panjana who was like, well, I really connected with Janae, but maybe Panjana is going to be more of a fairer judge when it comes to the eliminations because it's like, hey, she's already a judge on Drag Race Thailand. She's already done that before. So I feel like she can be a little bit more unbiased in her opinions, but I guess that'll get more difficult for her as the season goes on when she becomes a lot closer with the girls. So yeah, we'll just kind of have to see where it goes. And because the queens are all from different seasons of Drag Race, you can really see the different dynamics between like the different cultures and the shows because when the UK queens all came on stage, they were all like buddy buddy and they were like, oh, hey queen. And they were being so nice and friendly. And then it kind of took a turn because like in comparison, you saw like Monique and B in the corner, like judging everyone and like talking about strategy. And it's just going to be interesting to see how they all work together. And so I'm really excited to see where the season goes. Um, and so yeah, then I'm going to move on to the lip sync because I haven't talked about it. I'm going to forget. So in terms of the lip sync, this is when I realized that your lip sync outfit definitely sets a tone for the lip sync because I was really surprised when Jimbo decided not to change her outfit when Panjana did. And I feel like it was to Panjana's benefit to change her outfit so that she could obviously easily move around the stage and dance because in her runway outfit, you clearly couldn't do that. Um, and I thought the same with Jimbo. I was like, Jimbo, how are you going to move around in the outfit that you chose? But then she did the little like reveal she was in a leotard, she could move around a little bit better. But still her lip sync felt a little bit clunky in comparison to Benjina because Benjina was like moving all over the show and like really giving it vibes and <laughs> Jimbo was just kind of stomping around the stage in those boots. I was like, girl, yeah, your outfit really does like change the whole dynamic of your lip sync. So I feel like maybe after this Jimbo will hopefully pick a better lip syncing outfit. Um, I also feel like her makeup was not the best to do the lip sync in either because obviously part of the lip sync is being able to see you like mouth the words and like really be in the performance but because of Jimbo's makeup because her face was so dark and all you could see was like her white lips but not really because she also had a mask thing on it was really hard to really sell that uh, Spice Girls performance in her outfit. Um, and so yeah, I feel like that's why Jimbo lost the lip sync. If Jimbo had changed her outfit, would it have been a more fair fight? 
possibly, but I don't really know because it's like I haven't really seen Jimbo lip sync before, so I don't really know if she's better depending on what she's wearing or if maybe it was a song, who knows. But yeah, I think that Pangina was a well-deserved winner and she got the first ever gold repeater badge, so super exciting. And yeah, we've already talked about Lemon's elimination. And so yeah, that kind of brings us to the end of my thoughts on the first episode of Drag Race UK versus the world. Like I said, I think it's very interesting to see the different dynamics between the different cultures of drag. I'm really interested to see where it goes. This is going to be a really fun competition. I can already feel it. And next week, we got a preview. It's going to be a sewing challenge, which Baga is not good at, which I'm worried about because Baga is actually a really strong competitor based on Drag Race UK season one. So I'm hoping that she at least scrapes by to like see what else she can do in the competition. Um, in terms of the other girls, don't really know what their sewing abilities are going to be like, so it'll be interesting to see what they pull out. And yeah, I'm just excited for this competition. And I'm just excited that Drag Race is back in my life because I have not been watching Drag Race US season 14 because they decided to take it off of Netflix, which I thought was really rude. Um, I can still watch it in the UK on Y Presents Plus, but your girl doesn't want to pay for that. So yeah, blessed that Drag Race UK vs. The World is on the BBC and that it's free. And so that's all I have to say about Drag Race UK versus the world. In terms of people that I'm rooting for, well, obviously I'm running for Blue Hydrangea. I am also really interested in Pangina. She really grabbed my attention in this first episode, so I'm really rooting for her. And if I had to say anyone else, I would really say I'm interested in seeing where B goes. I want her to shine. I don't think that I want her to win necessarily, um, but I do, I do want to see her do better in the competition. And so yeah, that's where we are right now. Definitely going to be tuning in next week. I'm really excited. I'm going to leave this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. And let me know in the comments below who you guys are rooting for in this season of Drag Race UK versus the world. And so yeah, uh, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.